Okay, we're live. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, great. I believe we are live uh, with the ripple effect with Dave and Erica. And unfortunately, we, we lost another guest um, due to um, a personal reason of health, health and the family issue. But so we're going to try to get Brian Gabriel back um, soon. So we apologize if you're tuning in for him. But um, Erica and I are here and we may have another surprise guest joining us shortly. Um, how, how's your day and week going, Erica? My day is going well. It's been like kind of packed. I've been up since six something this morning with uh, discussions with people I met in um, the Shiro Speaker Summit. And so, wow, I packed in my schedule yesterday and today. It feels like very full, long days. Now, tell me about this Speaker Summit. Is that the Katarina event and what was the kind of purpose of it in terms of what was it? What was it for? Okay, so what was it for? Good question. Well, a whole um, amazing panoply of women from all over the country and beyond this country were on, and we were talking about and working on our presentation, our speaking, our serving through speaking and giving speeches and all that that goes with. So you know how Katerina is so much fun and magical. So she brought together a whole bunch of uh, beautiful women from all over. So I was talking to Elaine earlier from the East Coast and Brittany up in Wa in uh, Washington state and um, definitely future guests of ours. And um, you know, I had a lot going on this past weekend with a friend in the hospital and even just tuning in just a little bit, I got a lot out of it and connected with some great people. You know, it's all about the relationship, I feel, in networking and connecting and making it fun. And definitely that happens when you hang out with Ms. Bing Bing. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I, I just came out from under a virtual event that I helped produce last week. So I feel like there's been a big burden lifted. And, you know, I, um, got some new capabilities here for live streaming that I'm working on. And I know we were going to talk about that in one of our check-ins. So um, I've also been talking to another colleague of mine to really build increased capacity for essentially, you know, it's almost like a TV station you can create for entrepreneurs and, um, you know, really a lot of fun products out there and in video land and live events so, that I'm working on. So great. Uh, the world needs what you do. <laughs> I find that David, you know, just like, I, I think you, you might've seen a testimonial I wrote about you, David, you, you make things easy to get on video. And um, for anybody who's tuning in, who's like, oh, I couldn't possibly do my video. Or I couldn't possibly get on um, social media. You make it so easy. So it's like, guess what? Even in spite of my dislike of social media i'm out there because i've been doing this every week with you david and it makes it so easy you make it easy to be out in front live and uh in all the other ways so thank you thank you thank you yeah i, I mean gratitude. in a few ways i feel like this covid thing has really helped springboard this new video environment because it's so much easier to be on camera um, in a virtual sense than to go out there and take the stage, say, if you were presenting on, on stage, I, I think there's just a lot less opportunities for that too. You have to be at kind of a higher level to get there to whereas in this virtual world, it's totally flattened, you know, the, the, like the, the barriers and the ability to do that. So it's really kind of a, a brave new world out there, so to speak, in video. And I'm, I'm glad to see you and a lot of other folks really taking advantage of it. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just profound, actually. I have so many videos to upload because of doing the ripple effect with you. I have so many videos to pull and get onto YouTube. And I mean, it's endless. So I'm never going to have a shortage of videos to play with. I just have to, you know, my virtual assistant and I are working on that. So yeah, thank you for so much content. Yeah, yeah, good. And there's some new things that 
you might try out that we can brainstorm about, you know, one innovative idea I'm working on that we're actually going to be coming out with uh, an example on is really as an entrepreneur to create your own show with a colleague of mine named Don Wexler, who's a video pro too. And he has a studio. So you can actually um, develop a show, you know, say an attorney wants to develop a show on personal injury and you can just stream that live at a certain day each week, but then you can create all the videos um, up front. And uh, so we're, we're excited to kind of, we're really in the development stages of just doing the marketing right now, but we're going to launch that pretty soon. So say you have your um, healing um, bliss with Erica Gimbel, you can have that be a regular show in addition to, I know these live yeah. events are great, but the, the thing is they take up a lot of our schedule. And if you can kind of have a system to where your production is streamlined and compacted into one day and maybe a day of or half day of production and two or three hours of prep versus every week, you know, that's huge. And I think a lot of solopreneurs or visionaries, that's all the difference in actually having a program or not. So if that, if that makes sense. Totally. Totally. So, yeah. it's, so it's, it's such a big, bad world. And as long as you just take your breath, take a breath and don't get overwhelmed, you can do all sorts of shenanigans. So there's no, there's no shortage. Oops. I'm attempting to forward the link to Mr. Um, McKendall and he is wanting it to be through email. Could, let's see if I can um, send him an invite. Let's see. Copy invitation. Yeah. So, um, David, how soon will that be available and ready to go to press? Um, I mean, that really in a, within a few weeks. Yeah, I could do it right now, but I'm still, you know, I, I want the full kind of Hollywood type production. So, you know, looks like kind of access Hollywood if you want that look or whatever. So you can actually develop bumpers and have transitions and things. So it's an actual show type thing and i'm really kind of scoping out all those capabilities and how to Sign how to kind up. of Sign how to put that up. in a box for entrepreneurs so to speak yeah what do you think is the price point for something like that um i mean very very reasonable i mean uh, a set of i mean it it depends on how produced you want it but i mean i would say each video could start as little as five hundred dollars but um and you know, so we, we can, we can do some experimenting on this show and as part of the ripple effect to kind of do a entry level thing for you and demo it to you. So. And, totally. uh, yeah. and one of these days we sh it would be fun to play with other kinds of video platform like live stream or um, just to see how we like the different ways we can do what we do. Um, I know you're not as much of a fan of live stream, but um, it's really interesting um, so, so yeah. 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 I'll be showcasing some of those, you know, I really think there's, there's some different systems. We don't have to get into those right now, but there's always one or two weak points that you have to really acknowledge or find out about first, you know, for example, um, you know, but I, I got a lot to say there, but I, I do like kind of trying out different things, but I often try things. I just don't, use them because you want to make sure they're they're strong on you know everything that you need and the big thing also is the production um capability in terms of if you have one person um there's kind of a limitation there but if you have a team then you can do more so um but let, let's let's move to the tower gardens before lawrence joins us i know it's been a little while since you've told us about your work on tower gardens and you know people haven't tuned into the ripple effect before could you just tell us you know what a tower garden is and what you're doing with these you're also bringing these tower gardens to schools and why that's a good thing yeah so um many people know me as a therapist psychotherapist and um i'm teaching workshops that are about expression and self-care and um activating your inner creator and here is our friend uh, Mr. McKendall coming in. Um, 
So, but there are two schools that I recently got a grant, got grants to be able to grow with these vertical aeroponic systems. And so I'm what, really excited. And actually, if it's okay, I can share my screen. I can show you the two schools. Um, they are the Rock Point School in uh, Burlington, Vermont. And this is uh, their website. This is a school I used to work for way back when I was in my early 20s. And this school is in Burlington, Vermont, and um, they have very long, cold winters. So we're going to get them some indoor tower gardens. That's the school right there. It's this big old building from like 1800 and something. I forget what exact year it was opened up. But um, I used to work there. It was such a great experience to be there at the school. And um, so that's really exciting. And the other school that we're going to have some vertical garden action growing in is the right here in our backyard, uh, Academy of Alameda. This school got the, one of the Whole Kids Foundation grants with me. And so we're gonna start, this is a middle school. So uh, the second floor, which is the middle school, will get to have uh, tower gardens growing in their science classroom. So three, I, I believe this is our plan is three different science teachers will be um, having the tower garden in their classroom. And uh, we'll be starting that very shortly. We have the money in our hands to get the towers and now we're gonna get them growing. So we're really excited about that. Okay, great. Do you, do you wanna give us a quick look at one of your towers now or should we, maybe we should introduce Lawrence and- Let's, um, let's uh, go to Lawrence. If anybody has a question about growing vertically, you can contact me through, um, um, getkidsgrowing.com or my website ericgimble.com spelled the, the way my name is spelled here and I'm happy to connect and find out what you want to grow and save water um, so let's let's uh, get over to Mr. McKendall who has joined us oh he's muted yeah you're muted Hey, Lawrence, uh, just introduce yourself and tell us about what you do. I will say that Lawrence is what I, um, I'll give a little testimonial after I'll let him talk first because we've had him in the waiting room for too long. And I, I can give a testimonial too about Lawrence McKendall. So now he's unmuted. So speak. So first of all, I was looking at a video last night about the new Disney space restaurant and there's a clip as they, they, they put you on a virtual space elevator and then they put you in a virtual space station restaurant. And as you walk, you get off the elevator and you walk into the restaurant, they actually walk you through how vegetables will be grown in space. And it looks like a potential, a tower garden situation. So it's very cool to like go, oh, look at this. This is what you could have on earth if you get a tower garden. So, um, so what you're offering is very future uh, and very now, and uh, they're using it to feed a restaurant. So it's definitely to your point of like having multiple tower gardens, having a farm. I thought that was kind of cool. And I was looking for that clip to share. Anyway, hello, I'm a graphic designer. Uh, this is some of my work behind me. I do logos and other branding conversations with clients to help them tell their story. Uh, many of my people that I know, much like David, we like to tell the story, tell tell client stories. And um, sometimes it starts with an annual report. It starts with a brochure. Others go, you know what? I, I need to have a logo. And then that is the starting point, launch point for, that's the hub of so many other things. It's, you got business cards, you got stationery, it can go to brochures and websites and other things, but it really helps a client, you know, crystallize what they're about, how they want to be represented. And it's a fun process, especially when the end and the client, what I've discovered is it's, it's lovely when you know a client likes your work, when they want to start putting it on clothing. So they want to rock it and they're not waiting just to pull out their business card, they're rocking their business card on, on a hat, on a, on a hoodie. So that's kind of fun to see as well. But uh, anyway, so thank you for having me. Yeah, thank I know. I've, <laughs> I, I, be, I feel like there's been uh there's a, there's a renaissance of sorts in graphic design under covid you know because combined with this kind of video revolution is really everybody needs to step up their game online and graphic design is really such a great place to do that and um you know lawrence has for example done all of my major logos quantum leap ripple effect 
industry leader, wide angle media, the one I have back here, along with my Zoom background. And I, I know Erica's known you for a lot longer than I have. She's probably has it. Could you give a testimonial for some of the work he's done for you, Erica? Definitely. I was just uh, messaging Bobby Frazier about the uh, graphic that Lawrence has behind his head there for plant plant and soul for his pizza company. So he's like, okay. Um, so yes, Lawrence has created graphics for me that I really, I really uh, appreciate. And they help me be tight and right and hook my look with all the things I do and offer. And um, I can share those graphics if you want, or I know Lawrence can too, but, but they, one of them is, it says food autonomy, food empowerment it has this beautiful background. And that was, um, uh, the logo that was used for uh, like a conference I was part of the this women's um, Valentine's Galentine's thing and and that graphic was transmutable to other things so when I've given talks at Rotary Clubs and other places I love that graphic the food autonomy food empowerment graphic he's also created a series of logos for my um, my campaign when I taught Crouching Tiger Hidden Artist and in different classes that were that I was offering for my community to be come get some self care and self expression. So Lawrence was he he created this beautiful background that has my E for my name Erica and then offshoot of that and it's really gorgeous. And then there was one other graphic he created. I'm trying to remember what that was, but um, get kids growing. Oh, get kids growing. The logo for get kids growing. He he created that a bunch of years ago. Um, sorry, Lawrence, what did you say? Well, as you're speaking, I'm hunting to see if I can find some of those. Oh, examples. Yeah. I could pull it up. You talk, you guys talk a little more and I could pull it up if you like. I also really like the ones he did for Phil Bennett on Safari because, you know, good design really makes the, the, the business and the person come to life. And, you know, this is a, a colleague of ours who does safaris and he would have these little prints and um you know a whole package of materials that have this cool safari design so um i i really think um you know i i think what makes him different in a lot of ways is how how much kind of investigation you do on the front end about what people's goals how how you want that design to feel and i think a lot of people in graphic design, you don't get to kind of like the level that you do for some of these, the, the preparation. And that's also a process. A lot of it I've kind of adopted for how I do my video stuff too, because I see how effective it is. Yeah. You know, it's also, it's also nice to like have um, interesting topics that you go. Okay. So, so uh, I'll show you a couple of the flyers and, and this, you know, it's always funny. You look back and go, I tweaked this, I tweaked that, and I can improve this. You just sort of sensibility changes over time. But a lot of times what you find is, you know, when you go to art school, you have the bigger projects that would normally in the real world go, you've got to do this almost. I mean, the funny thing is the better you get, the hotter the projects come in. You know, we want to use you and we need it tomorrow. And then a lot of the stuff that happens, like the investigation work has to be on a really tight timeline and you try to get everything uh, together. So that's always, that's always interesting where you come out of art school and you want to be, you know, you've got your chapeau and your mustache and your tipperello and your eye patch and your ascot and you're trying to be an artiste. And then when you got in the real world, it's, you, can you do it just quicker? And so some of the things that I've, I've done were were on a quicker timeline uh i'll show you some of the things i did for phil as well just because they were fun projects so i'm glad that you saw that um i was hoping to do more of his travel things because it was it was fun to get it was fun to get get under the hood and try to try to capture you know like the, the man is is an expert at what he does and how can you how can i bring what i do to really capture because once he starts talking, waxing poetic about his trips, what can you do on a flyer that gets people to go, wow, you know what, I, I got to be a part of this conversation. So um, can I share some things? Yeah, yeah, let me uh, make you co-host here. And and look, I'm, you know, I just, I got my coffee going here. Uh, and you, I'm ready you, to- Are you guys able to see the thing that I pulled up? Let me see. Yeah. I, 
You saw it? Okay, good. That was the logos that I was talking about that Lawrence created for me that I really- You got kid, yeah, kids growing? Good. That was I fun. Get kids growing. I had the E, the EG, and then I had the food autonomy, food empowerment. I, I would like to animate the EG and have the, the, the sparkles sort of move through. And the reason why I did that, it's very interesting, is that Erica is, is the antithesis of being in a box. Uh, but you're doing a lot of things that are very anchored. And I wanted you to initially come across as, as anchored, but the background was dynamic enough to give you your effervescence. And so, I mean, I was doing a couple things psychologically for your clients looking at you, but it did not, you know, diminish the shine. It, it definitely sparkled in a different way. So that's why I did what I did for your shot. And I, and I, I thought it was, I thought it was fun. Um, these ones that you were talking about that David um, was talking about was, um, let me see. was the Botswana and I, I put a I put a mask in the background. I actually took the photograph here and it's always interesting when you're doing a color palette for anything, you know, rather than having to like come up with what is the color palette, you really look at the main photographs and go, there is the color palette. And you try to create colors within the flyer that create a harmony. And so it's 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 very digestible. So I, I did a mat of the zebras, a mask behind it, and put it behind Botswana. So there is some dynamicness to it. Um, then the three key sub figures behind there that he often talks about. This is where you're going to go. This is the potential of the excitement you're going to see. And then just where in Africa, where on the continent are you going? Just to add some sort of right brain, left brain. So you can get very emotional, wax poetic, and really get into the concrete. Where you're going to stay, how you're going to travel, where you're going to live. And then I always, ideally, if I've got enough time, try to get a really nice footer on something. And this is even with a website. It tends to take a little bit more time. But if you've got a footer that's screened back and very complimentary, it just adds a really holistic feel to a lot of things. And so, you know, rarely do you have enough time to actually take the time or have the image to screen back. Um, but, you know, given enough time, that's what I was able to do. And I actually wanted to use it as a watermark for I, I would do it if I did more flyers. That would be, I mean, it's a very stereotypical going on a safari look, sunset, giraffe silhouettes, you know, or, or elephants in the background. Those are great silhouettes to see, and it definitely captures the imagination. So I did that, and I'll just show you one other one so we can. I just love the, you know, the look, McKendall, and um, you really help on Safari Inn take their, their look to the next level. Um, what was before was not so good. <laughs> you know, you, you have, it's like with anything else, you've got, you've got an expert that knows his, that knows his craft. Uh, and then, and then, you know, he, he does a DI, a lot of people do DIY. They don't have the budget, they do Canva. And you find that if you hire a designer, um, your stuff looks that much tighter, that much tighter. Uh, there'll be times where you go, you know what, go with Canva, do your own gig. I don't feel it's going to be a big deal. And I'm like, you know, you, you may want to, you may want to consider bringing in, it's going to be a little bit more expensive or a lot more expensive, but it'll pay and it'll pay in the long run. If you're, if you're really talking about establishing a look and a feel. Um, so um, the other one is. And we will need to wrap up in a few minutes. So sure. give I'll, do, it to I'll us. show one other one. This is with the Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. and um, use the elephants in the background and um, you as the mat um, and, and you just see sort of the continuity and you've got the footer. So it's, it would, I was establishing a family of look that for other destinations, there would be a consistency of look and feel and, and what people would be able to navigate for their um you know, okay, we're used going this lodging. This is sort of the background background for this particular trip. So um, yeah, that was fun. And, you, and one of the keys is fonts. You wanna look at a font that sort of captures the essence. In this particular case, I went with a, I think it was actually called an African, a African or safari type of font. And um, it gave that, 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 that feel for, um, for the event. So there you go.
Yeah, no, beautiful. I I love how you use the map too, and then how the the river and the map is kind of light in the background. And you're right, the the font is key, and you you always pick these great fonts that I don't know where you get them, but they are kind of like you get a feeling where it just couldn't be better. The fonts that you you pick and that you have available to you. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. I I also did you do his his um logo to that on safari I, I just love that logo i know in video they say you want to cut on action so it just looks like somebody just took a step right there and that's your logo it's such a great feel to it so so that would probably be in the background if i truly had i did not he you know one of the things that happens with a lot of people who have fonts they work with a designer then they've got a low res one they don't they, they don't know what to do it it's very limited because their designer is left out of the building they own all the the, the designer has owned the all the fonts or all the work is not handed over so i came in and resurrected the font in a way that he could resize it and do a number of things so no i do not make credit it's a very fun font and i wish i could say yes it's a very clever and it's a light it's very very light touch font i like it a lot logo but no i do not take credit i just resurrected and allowed him to be able to use it you know, from from vector on the side of a of a billboard to on something like this. So no, but it is a very it's a very lovely a logo. I agree. And I mean, I think it just shows that it doesn't have to be fancy. A lot of times, simpler is better. That that's not a real, you know, elaborate. But it's just it it it's casual, but it's inviting. You know, so and I I know you could probably update it and make it look kind of more of a a three D or whatever. But you know, sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it really works to just have something that's so much simpler, you know, think. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I would, um, the only accents I would probably do is maybe add whatever that might be. That's a Safari. I mean, it, it, it is, it is a lot. I mean, it says Safari in, but I would add a, an element or two. Other than that, I really, for the most part, I wouldn't, I didn't offer to mess with it. It didn't look like he, he had a mark. He liked it. Others is like going, you may, you may want to update or consider updating your, your, your logo. It's, it's kind of tired. It's not good. It's not working for you. It doesn't speak, I think, to exactly what you do. I mean, this is yeah. fine. Plus, when you see Phil, he looks like a safari guy. He rocks the safari look. So if it was one thing is if you were dressed all in black and you were the businessman, I'm like, yeah, you may want a logo that actually says what you do. But he is a walking logo. Yeah. Yeah. The great branding. Um. Maybe we can end with Erica, if you're still there. I know you wanted to do a fourth quarter check-in, but I did want to, maybe we could pose the question to Lawrence first about if you have anything coming down the pipe or uh, ideal clients that you're looking to work with as we close out the year, maybe begin 20 to 2022. Uh, who are you looking for out there to work with? You, you know, I continue to look for people who are want their story to be told. Maybe they don't know. That's what you sort of say. They, they, they're starting a business. Uh, they need a refresh. And so right now, the three interesting projects or even four interesting projects that I have, which is mirrors probably what I want for the fourth quarter that you're talking about, is um, I've got a nonprofit I'm working with. I did their newsletter logo to them and they continue to give me, they're really appreciating having somebody can do design. So a nonprofit that wants their story told and wants a designer to come on and do a lot of different things, uh, that would be great. I mean, that's a steady business for a solopreneur and then they, they get their story told. Uh, I have a gentleman who's in the 420 business and I'm doing a label for his um, CBD uh, cream and uh, that's an interesting, that's a lot of beautiful branding in that, in that uh, vertical of, of, uh, of uh, CBD uh, uh, products. That's very cool. And I'm doing actually an ultimate Frisbee tournament in, in, uh, in LA. Uh, they had a particular logo that they had. They did not have a, a particular, they had a web person who fancied themselves a designer. And, um, and sometimes that's good and sometimes it doesn't work out. So I came in, gave them a little flair. I think it's a really cool logo. I think it's still in flux, but it was something that they needed something really hot to do. So I'm, I'm, I, I like varying voices that come through law firms, health, education are all good, solid storytellers. Uh, but um, I mean, people who just, you know, like are really interested and eager to like update their brand. They don't fancy themselves a designer. Like we do what we do really well. We know we don't do this. And this is why we're bringing you in. And that's a nice relationship. And uh, you can do some exciting work in that 
in that um, in that really that that niche right in there that relationship so there you go hope i answered your question david yeah perfect if you don't mind just do the stop share so we can get back to gal review and erica if you are there i'm um, here where okay. do you think i went i've been here the whole time oh okay yeah i've never i hadn't heard you be that quiet and <laughs> I was busy. I thought testing. you disappeared on us. I was, I was, I was letting uh, the people that we were highlighting their graphics know that um, we were just yapping about them. So, um, so quarter four is exciting because for me, because I get to help these schools grow, like I was mentioning before. And guess what? February 2022 is right around the corner for other schools who want to go for the same, very same grant. Three thousand dollars is a great starter grant to get your towers going and growing. And, um, you know, it's such an honor and a privilege to open up the minds of those who think they have to go get that Franken food at the corner store. That five and 10 store that has real cheap crap food is actually a detriment to the health and longevity of those children. And we have, you know, crazy epidemic proportions happening of kids not living, outliving their parents because of the a disease that they will incur. So more plants is always better. And um, quarter four is all about it. Great. And my, my quick check in is I am, I just released my industry leader program, which is a business leadership program, kind of an outgrowth of the quantum leap program. And I'll put that link in the comments. And I, I will also share your website, Lawrence, if you have a specific link, let's put those in the comments as well. And I am working on these virtual event capabilities that I was talking to Erica about. So I'd like to put together another summit for either the ripple effect, or I'm going to do one for industry leader too. So um, lots of fun things to do as we close out the year. And um, I guess we'll, we'll end it there for the ripple effect. If, if you have any closing comments, Erica, feel free enjoy the end of september okay great we're uh we were just setting up some halloween decorations today i got the 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 sign on the the door watch out for the vampires so uh, be careful out there and uh, we'll see everybody next week for the ripple effect thank you david thank you bye